morning, morning, everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I am Sean Butler, Bugsy over the shoulder, doing the things she loves to do. I hope you're all happy and healthy doing the things that you love to do. Please do me a favour. Like I always ask, and like you always oblige, and I really do appreciate it. Hit the like button for me on the video. It really helps the channel. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. It's free to do. On the march to 20k, still 50% of people that watch the channel regularly don't subscribe. Really appreciate it if you hit the button. Hit the notification bell as well and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic. And guys, it's Monday. There's not a hell of a lot to talk about apart from two transfer news, views and clues stories. The first one I'm going to get through very quickly. And that is that we are linked with a summer move for Roma triple threat. Indispensable player for Jose Mourinho. Cristante, Cristante, uh, I'm not sure how you uh, pronounce his name, a very versatile defensive player, can play as a centre-back, can play as a number six, can play even as a central midfielder, box to box. He has played in all three positions for Jose Mourinho this season and last. A good ball-carrying, ball-playing, strong, tough tackling member of their team and again you know, I think he scored three goals this season or two goals and two assists I think one of them came as a centre-back one of them came as a DM he is a very useful player that I particularly don't really see the likelihood of it happening for a bunch of reasons I don't think he's fast enough from what I've seen to carry the, the load in the kind of the, 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 the sort of centre-back role as a DM I think, you know, Roma traditionally kind of play with double pivot, so I'm not entirely convinced that he is necessarily going to adapt to the responsibility of covering the ground that Bissouma does. And uh, in any event, Roma, Jose Mourinho has called him indispensable. Doesn't want to lose, uh, lose him. The rumours are out there, according to Tuto Mercato Webb, who have transcribed it from um, Il Messigno or something, uh, another, another Italian outlet that Tottenham would look to do business for him in the summer. Again, I think this is just lazy. I think that he's too important for Roma. I don't think the player particularly suits our system and I would be surprised if anything would come of it. So I'm not going to spend any more time dwelling on it. Although I do like the player. I think he's a very good player, very technically crafty, strong as I say, and, and good at doing the defensive work for his team. And pops up with uh, important goals in important matches. The more interesting one that's out today, and Romano's even talked about it, is Leeds United winger Wilfred Gnonto. Nonto. Gnoto. I never know how to say that guy's name either. Um, very sort of stocky, short, tricky, direct player for Leeds. I really enjoyed watching him last season when they were in the Premier League. This season, under Daniel Fark Farke, another name I'm not sure how to say. <laughs> He uh, he's barely got a look in. He doesn't really play too much in Leeds system, and consequently, he's looking to move on. Leeds United, I think, turned down a bid from Everton for the player um, in the summer of about twenty-two million pound. I mean, imagine if they actually accepted it. Everton would be even even more problems, I think, with regards to their FFP. But in any event. Leeds turned that one down. They valued him closer to at £30 million. And the story goes that in January, Tottenham might try to do some sort of player plus cash um, deal for Joe Rodon going in the other way, making that move permanent, which will be interesting. According to the reports, Joe Rodon is valued at £20 million by Tottenham, which is quite eye-watering for a player that's barely kicked a minute in a Tottenham shirt. Um, but you know, he's doing wonderful things at Leeds United. Look, for me, Wilfred Nonto Gnoto is, look, he's the kind of player that I think Tottenham are looking for, a guy that can run and take players on, tricky, a bit more direct. As I've said before on the last four or five videos we've done about wingers, I feel like we have a plethora of options, but none of which, none of whom, really want to take a player on. And that's sort of something that I think that Tottenham are very much lacking in our wide options. And Wilfred Gnonto can absolutely take a player on. I do think he's he's got a lovely little left foot on him. He can finish as well. He's got some... Um, the stats from last season are 
pretty impressive in terms of where he ranked for you know, take-ons and successful dribbles and all that sort of stuff. I think he is the sort of player we're looking for. But I don't know. To me, guys, you know, there's something about him which just feels a little bit underwhelming. I know a lot of people really rate him and think of him as like a new, the new version of Willian and those sorts of things. Chelsea were interested in him before. And look, I'd like to get your thoughts on it. I, I don't know if I'm just a little bit underwhelmed because, you know, he can't even get into a championship team right now. But that's not necessarily always... It's context, isn't there, around the way that the manager wants to play. And But I don't know. I don't follow Leeds and I don't follow the championship closely enough to know whether or not he's out of form is the reason why he's been dropped or if it's just a tactical kind of formation uh, issue. But the reality is that, you know, he's surplus to requirements seemingly to Daniel Farke. And from what I've read in, on Twitter about him recently, a lot of Leeds fans in the comments are very happy for Tottenham to do some sort of cash plus player swap deal for Joe Roden, which, you know, for, for me, I, I always kind of, I think you can learn a little bit about a player that you might not be watching too much by the willingness of the fans of the team that seemingly is smaller than you. I don't want to obviously be disrespectful to Leeds, but in terms of current present stature, Leeds are obviously a, you know, a slightly um, weakened version of their best version of themselves. And their fans are seemingly very okay with the idea of losing Nonto, getting about 10 million quid and keeping Joe Roden. Because Roden's been such an impactful and important part of their squad. And I, to me, it's just one of those considerations as to go, well, um, you know, do they know something that we don't? Is there, a, uh, is there a reason why that they are willing to let him go? Is there a reason why he's not made it into the team? As a player, morning. As a player, I like him. I do. Whenever I've watched him, I think he's exciting. He's like, like I said at the start, he's stocky when he, he's small, but can run at pace. But he's also stocky, so he can kind of bulldoze his way through a little bit. Um, and like I say, you know, interesting to have a left footer playing off the left. It's not something you see that often these days. Most of the time, you see, you know, inverted stronger feet on on the width. Not so with uh, with Gonzo. But yeah, to me, as much as I think we, we could just add him to the long, long list of um, wingers that we've been linked with, Fabrizio Romano said that he's absolutely, yeah, he, he does think that there is there is truth to the story that Lonto is looking to leave in January and to get the Italian player sort of resurging, resurrecting his career. Probably didn't like the fact that he was kept at the club, wanted to leave to go to Everton in the summer. But in terms of links to Tottenham, Romano said... Uh, he hasn't heard anything concrete regarding that, although the rumours are around. So, like I say, I think we'll just put it to the bottom of the list of wingers. If I'm honest, if we're looking for a 20 million, 25, 30 million pound winger, you know who I fancy. There's players out there that are available for the same sort of money, that are doing it at a higher level, that are doing it consistently, that according to FB refs are in the top two or three percentile across the top five or six leagues. You know, players like Scott Olsen, players like... Williams, players like Noosa, yeah, and there's a plethora of others that I'd put ahead of Gnonto. But let, let me know, guys. Do you maybe there's a gem there? Like I say, a lot of people think he has the potential as a young guy to go on to wonderful things in his career. And yeah, maybe I'm just guilty of you know looking down my nose a little bit at the fact that he's currently not able to get into the Championship side, and that Leeds fans are very willing to let him go. That's it really guys, not much else to report on. I will be dropping a video in the next day or two uh, showing the top 10 video, uh, sorry, the top 10 centre-back options of Tottenham's January window. So let me know if you like that when you see it. Hit the subscribe and if you haven't already, go and check out last night's Tottenham Takes with Henry and Jacob and Deji, where we, we went later than usual, nine o'clock it was. And we, uh, yeah, we sort of talked about the FFP and you know, what's the right thing to do? What is reasonable? What is justice? And for me, like I say, I think that... I think you should feel sorry for some fans, but not for all fans. If if you if Everton had a section of their fan base that were demanding that the chairman spent money, then sometimes you get what you ask for. Be careful what you wish for. Morning. And, uh, yeah, Manchester City and Chelsea next, hopefully. And listen, for what it's worth, if there was a a demand on the back of that that every single team had their accounts audited 
obviously that would take you know a decade to, to file through but I still feel confident that Daniel Levy wouldn't have the brass tacks the bullshitness the balls on him to be demanding FFP rules be implemented and correctly adjusted and addressed unless he was extremely confident that we did everything football wise by the book and I saw in yesterday's video that I put out a few people from other fan bases commenting that you know how how hypocritical is it that you know we would have these or I would have these opinions when you know our owner is going to prison for securities breaches in the forex markets or whatever it was that he did and uh, you know and also having Fabrizio uh, sorry having um, Paratici on the uh, on the books knowing what he's capable of and look, they're right it's fair you know he without sin cast the first stone etc glass houses and all that but as I say when it comes to footballing matters at Tottenham I'm fairly sure that Daniel Levy would he's just he isn't the kind of guy that has the, the risk sentiment to expose the sustainability of the football club that's part of his mantra that's part of his his thesis his ethos his philosophy he said it a thousand times sustainability is one of his core metrics that he wants to go by so you know it's times like these especially if Chelsea and Manchester City do get the book thrown at them and if they, they do have significant and severe consequences for any potential guilt that they shall be exposed to have it's times like these that I feel a little bit more um, reassured in having a manager having an owner who has done everything that they have done within the rules to try to, to level up on the revenue number to still keep us relatively competitive absent the trophies but like I said yesterday if you were to remove Chelsea and Manchester City you know from all of the trophies that have been won in the last 10-15 years there'd be uh, quite a gap quite a dearth in trophy winners fascinating story we'll see how it unfolds but yeah for me I think that Daniel Levy He's probably feeling a little bit proud of himself at the moment. <laughs> Let me know how you feel. Anyway, that's it. Cristanti and uh, for the summer, don't believe it. And Nonto for January, don't really want it. That's the noise. That's the news. Let me know your thoughts. Cheers, guys. Have it a wonderful day. And like, subscribe and comment. And as always, bye-bye.